are listening to the Amodamar podcast. In this series, Amoda explores her essential teaching through conversation and excerpts from interviews and events. To find out more about events and to sign up for her newsletter, go to www.amodamar.com. Please subscribe, comment and share if this podcast moves you. And if you feel called to donate, please go to the website. Thanks for listening and we hope you enjoy. Greetings one and all and welcome back to another podcast with Amoda Ma. My name is Kavi, as you know, and I am delighted to be joined by Amoda again today. Hello, Amoda. Good afternoon, Kavi. Today we are going to be talking about something that's kind of interesting. I think it was prompted by um, something we saw by a person who's who's uh, going to be interviewing Amoda. Um, I don't know when, in a, in a few months or something. And so he was asking the question about um, where are he was saying where are the female teachers? in non-duality or the female teachers throughout history. Um, where are the female guides and, and, and teachers? Um, are there any? He was asking. He didn't really know of, of any. So we thought it would be interesting to explore a sort of question, is spirituality dominated by the masculine? And what that might mean, because it's not just about men and women it actually goes somewhat deeper than that so let me just read a little bit Amoda, of, of this that we we prepared a little bit earlier when we think of spiritual teachers we mostly think of enlightened beings such as jesus or buddha or even more contemporary con, contemporary masters gurus such as ramana papaji even osho krishnamurti you know um And in that history, there don't seem to be any real female role models to show us what it is to be an enlightened woman. There are various, I think, models in in a saintly kind of way throughout history. But we would be racking our brains to see, yeah, to, to come up with something. So. Mother Teresa comes to mind in some way, but she wasn't, you know, ever depicted as an enlightened being, more a saint in some way. So there's usually service orientated and sacrificial in some way. Why is this? So, Amoda, where should we start this conversation? As usual, we, we explore by opening a door to the mystery and then we just, you know... Yeah. jiggle along so well we don't have any <laughs> preset answers and i don't think there is a preset answer um of course we're just going to explore this and see what uh, <clears throat> what wants to come into this conversation um yes of course historically it is the male figures that appear prominently um uh, if we dig in a little bit, perhaps we'll find um that um Mary Magdalene was enlightened as such, yes, awakened to the Christ light and embodying that. But none of that has been passed down through history. And we don't remember her as such. We remember her as the fallen woman. (laughs) Um, So historically, there's a male-dominated culture and a subjugation of women, which still goes on in many cultures. Um, So that's going to be a big factor in it. Historically, women are the homemakers, the mothers who need to be at home. In some ways, you could say you can't have two masters. (laughs) If you have children, that is your master. That's the service that you're given to. Um, And there is a truth in that. You can't just abandon your service to children. 
and go to the ashram. So there is a truth in that, but there's also an untruth in that. Uh, the, the untruth the, being, yeah. That even mothers can awaken to their true nature. Even mothers can know unconditional love, <clears throat> a love that is not conditional on their children being a certain way or being successful or fulfilling some kind of role. So everything's a doorway to awakening to our true nature as love, as beingness. Um, and as we've moved away from those traditional roles and as spirituality or the more than spirituality, the, the genuine search for who we are beyond our culture, our identity, the roles we play has filtered into the everyday. We don't need to go to the ashram. So we don't need to leave behind the home and the role of parents and the role of breadwinner or the role of homemaker. We can be, we can discover who we are within any circumstance or situation. So historically that has changed. So perhaps that's part of the reason why historically it's been a male-dominated arena. Because the, the male, the man, could leave home and go to the ashram, go to the uh, meditation center, go to the Zen master and give himself to that, whilst the woman couldn't. <laughs> That's a very simplistic. Uh, well, it's so you know, on 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 a way, in a way, that's a a kind of a, a sort of earthly version. We need to just talk a bit about religion as well, and we also yeah. need to talk, you know, within the context of of rel religiosity about uh, the Father, you know, the Great Father, <laughs> and what what kind of role. That place. I mean, this is a, you know, as we're speaking, it sort of blows my mind. In as the history of the species is 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 sort of the well, the history of the world is somewhat involved in this, in a sense, because when we look at religion, as far as I know, uh, and maybe you know, I'll be corrected, but certainly in the last two thousand years or so, all of the religions. All of the certainly all the mainstream religions have had uh, the masculine at the at the head of it, and and, and it, it, what? <laughs> well, again, that's, that's that's that seems to be um, a blend, a mix of historical roles where men are historically more likely to be educated. Women are not because they're the homemakers and, 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 the, and the mothers that doesn't need an education as such traditionally. Um, so there's a historical context for that. So then, then religion is uh, what has become religion has had a, the seed of um, looking within and a, and a more philosophical inquiry that's given rise to what then becomes religion, yeah? whether it's Jesus or Moses or Buddha or so-and-so. So it has got a historical context in the roles that have been, that have been played and the um, possibility or availability for men to have either education, follow a philosophical tradition, um, look within, uh, and so on, whereas women haven't. So there's that. And then, of course, there's the kind of more psychology of it or the, yeah, the, the metaphysical side, which is the, 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 the masculine, which has dominated much of humanity's culture, um, is about authority or part of it, its dysfunctional side, is about <laughs> being the authority, the one, you know, the like you say, the father, the father figure to whom you submit your authority, which happens in traditional 
or yeah, cultures where the woman submits her authority to to the 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 male um, figurehead, whether it's the father or the husband, um, and that then <laughs> seeps into the whole of uh, humanity on all levels. Yeah, whether we're talking about business or politics or or religion. And so uh, power comes into it, authority and power. So there's roles, historical roles, which play a part of it and what's available for women. And then, and then this whole authority, di- power dynamic and um, the, the stereotypes, again, which are, are not the true qualities of masculine and feminine, but the stereotypes, which are really sort of a, a, a halfway, <laughs> um, a halfway understanding or uh, expression, I should say, of the masculine and feminine, which is, um, you know, the masculine is going into the world, is more ambitious, uh, has authority, has something to say, perhaps has something of the mind quality, yes. um, clarity, knowledge even philosophical knowledge, whatever. Yeah. Whereas the woman's stereotype in that sort of halfway place is uh, the one that takes care, the one that is more home-centered, body-centered, feeling-centered, takes care of the children, uh, supports the husband, supports the family on that emotional caring level. These are stereotypes that have become embedded in our culture, in our in our in humanity's history, if I should say, they're not the whole truth. <laughs> yeah, they're not the whole um, essence of of who we are. And then, you know, if we dig deep, we might see that Jesus transcended those t- stereotypes, and that he had probably what seems to be both qualities. Yeah. By the time the uh, Jesus was interpreted um, through the scriptures and through the Bible by men, mm. undoubtedly, yeah, it uh, it, 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 that changed. <clears throat> That's that seemed to change, yeah. Mm. And uh, and one wonders to what extent God is 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 the you know the manifestation of the masculine. <clears throat> well, yes, of course we super have super ego. Tra- tra- yes, traditional image of God as the father figure, uh, and the one who is all knowing and all seeing yeah, exactly. and all of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, benevolent, but but wrathful as well. Yes, yes. yeah, full of morality as well. Yeah, you know, full of authority you, yes. as long as you do the right thing. But if you don't do the right thing, then you, you know you've got the wrath of God, which is actually turned into the wrath of man. Yes, you know there are inherent problems in this because while you're there, while you're talking, you know about the qualities of the masculine, which tends to be more mind, yeah, and we know what trouble that can be as spiritual journeyers and teachers that that you are, you are, and I am. We we you know we t- we talk about this mind thing all the time, and so here we are in a situation where mind in you know the masculine mind which is in everyone let's face it has has become a tyrannous kind of force and when you talk to, uh, about the 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 woman you're talking about it in traditional ways but it's inherent in there is there's more of a feeling nature or there's more of a tendency to take care of and stuff like that and now we see i'm sorry to bring it out to 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 contemporary world but now we see a world you know uh, hold on, is, we're living in a masculine world, right? Yes, and, and, and the thing is that mind in itself is not something that we need no. to, um, you know, turn into the the the, the devil because no, mind not, itself is a natural yeah. function of of the human being. It's mind in service to what? Yeah, yeah, mind in service to itself or mind in service to authority, that kind of authority over, that's dangerous. And that's what we see. That's what's out of control in the world. But mind in service to heart, 
is something very beautiful. Of course, you know, we we see that, and I know it's controversial, but I don't see controversy in it, and neither do you, Kavi. I don't think in, in Osho, who was the clarity of mind, the depth of knowledge, philosophical knowledge, the ability to debate on a philosophical level, not from a violent place or an argumentative place, but from uh, clarity and, 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 and truth. And yet it was in service to the heart. Um, those who were close to him, perhaps, and those who have been really touched by, by his, his fragrance, know that it's all about the heart. It's all about love, ultimately. So mind is in service to that. Um, Hmm. then it's something very beautiful. Then it's something very, very beautiful. Um, So this is, this history is, is more about the, the service of mind to itself, which becomes an, an egoic, if you like, yeah, self-fulfillment because, you know, part of the thing that's, that's, that I've seen in all of this kind of journey is, is that, um, the, the, the the masculine tendency to deny feeling nature and within that emotions yeah and we see that in contemporary man we see it in men all over they they have the emotional body yeah the feeling body but it's almost like too much so it's it's and i'm not saying jesus in any way in fact you know when i what when I read or, or or perceive inwardly about Jesus, the man, the yeah, I see something of a very feeling nature, mm-hmm. yeah, in touch with his depth, in touch mm-hmm. with that that depth. Mm-hmm. But by the time it it ends up, you know, being rolled out as a religion, I see something very very different, and I see mm-hmm. that this is part of the the whole escapade, yeah, and this is part of the escapade of 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 religion male dominated religion which is the the kind of pushing away of this feeling nature and that's a problem yes 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 so um well essentially that's the nature of 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 the problem <laughs> yeah the inability to surrender to the depth of the heart yes to the innermost gentleness um so when when we come to that place within ourselves, it's no longer a matter of masculine or feminine. No, I think masculine and feminine gets transcendent, transcended, um, and then then it's like both qualities. Are, there's a kind of inner marriage, and and it's that 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 is the fragrance of the light, if you like, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what does that mean for more contemporary uh, teachers mm. who are not caught up in those roles and not caught up in that hierarchy? And I mean, really contemporary, um, um, because you know, in, in the non-dual world, we see many female teachers, um, not always as prominent as the male. Um, and I don't really know why. <laughs> I don't really know why. Um, I mean, the why is just, the why is also always a, a speculation, and people have their speculations mm-hmm. about it um, because it's you know. So, but I think as 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 some of that role playing um, becomes broken up. <laughs> In, in our in our modern day culture in our contemporary culture then then I, I think that's when it sort of goes beyond whether it's expressed through a masculine body or a feminine body I mean what's good now in a way is all of this is on the table that's what's great in the last I would say in the last 20 years yeah. As as non duality, particularly a non duality that has this quality of being neither this, neither that, everything and nothing, you know, at the same time. So, so there there is this emergent uh, conversation, mm. uh, you know, that includes this very 
subject, yeah, because everything is getting turned upside down in the world, yeah, and religion is coming up for grabs, and tyranny is coming up for grabs, and tyranny, you know, so often we don't associate tyranny with anything to do with gender. It's always tyranny. So generally, I think 99% is tyranny of the masculine, I have to say. And we see this operating in the Middle East, you know, it's like tyranny of the masculine. And, 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 you know, the world is changing and the world is changing fast. And I think people are, you know, women in particularly uh, are, are sick of some of this tyranny because it's had its run and it's had its longevity. Yeah, well, and I think it's changing. And this is part of that conversation, not this sure. conversation, but it, there's, this is deep. Yeah, yeah it's just, I True, mean, real. We, we, we do see that tyranny, you know, when, when we think of cults, whether they're spiritual cults, or they usually are spiritual cults of some sort, um, where there is a, a, a very hidden but eventually becomes exposed uh, power dynamic of control um, and abuse of power, um, I think almost always, and I can think of one example where it's not, and I'm not going to name names, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it, almost always <laughs> it's a, it's a, a male at the at the at the head of that cult. It's quite difficult, but not impossible, for a woman to abuse power. Quite difficult. It's not impossible. It can happen, and it does happen. Um, but I can only think of one example. <laughs> um, usually, it's easier for the man to abuse power. Why? Because of this uh, dynamic of the father figure. Uh, authority is handed to that. Um, because there is a certain charisma. What is that kind of allure that comes from a masculine in authority? Um, because, of course, sexual relationships Sex, yeah. can be uh, easily violated more easily from a man to a woman than from a woman to a man, although I can think of one example. <laughs> um, and... And so on. So it's 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 usually the, the the male, and 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 if if his own, um, if you like, I mean, there can be true awakening. There can be partial awakening. There can be simply being given some kind of uh, uh, sort of lineage being passed down. Um, because the, the 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 man, the masculine in that uh, situation may not have, and usually hasn't, done the personal work to expose, as you said, the feeling nature, the vulnerability and tenderness of the heart, and suppressed emotions. So usually, a spiritual teacher, and we're talking about more traditionally, gets handed down a lineage or grabs the lineage in some ways. <laughs> and has not done the personal work. And those hidden shadow realms then get played out in the arena of a hierarchical structure where he is given the authority. Um, so power, ambition, uh, yeah, approval, yeah, yeah. Um, being, you know, elevated and so on, all those dynamics come into play. If they haven't actually been cleansed, yeah, from the inside. And and so that's a dangerous. Is that that's dangerous though? <clears throat> Presumably that would be also dan dangerous for a woman. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So everybody male or female is corruptible or that has that potential whether they're an an, an, an enlightened being or a non-enlightened being yes there needs to be a 
a kind of marriage of having done the personal inner work with enlightenment. Although to me, (laughs) my understanding of enlightenment, (laughs) or at least how it's experienced here, is that it includes the inner work. They're not separate. But in the traditional sense, you can have enlightenment without any personal work having been done. And that's where it gets dangerous. I think, I think perhaps the difference sorry. today in, in our really you know immediate contemporary culture, if mm. we call that the non-dual <clears throat> arena to give it some kind of name or terminology, is that much of most of the awakening has come from having done the inner work. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not well, like I, I, you just stand up and claim <laughs> authority because there's no lineage to get that authority from. No. Well, that's also where I see that the, that's what I mean about the last 20 years that have seen this kind of movement. And, you know, it is it is the whole um, embodiment movement, let's call it. Yeah. And that embodiment movement is, you know, is is no, that's not, not acceptable anymore anywhere either in religion or in politics, <laughs> rampant, you know, as it is, and, and and in the spiritual arena, which holds itself, in a way, holds itself to a high standard. But that standard is murky, because as we've seen, and this is, this is not conjecture, this is fact, that lots of teachers in many different fields, uh, uh, areas of spirituality have held, been held up as the enlightened being, but their their personal behavior has not reflected that. So, so what does that mean? It's like that drives mm-hmm. us crazy. And I think we've had enough in a sense as, as regular people have had enough of that kind of conflict. And we're looking for transparency and we're looking for teachers who are through and through, let's call it, mm-hmm. yeah, through and through, top to bottom, all the way, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we we can trust something about it because you know people have been. I I I see uh, people have been betrayed mm-hmm. historically through through religion that has set this thing up. Yeah, this external for a start the externalization with of God. Secondly, the 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 um, depicting of God as some sort of masculine force. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and then, then co- conversely, the depicting of goddess as the flowing, dancing, earth-based Gaia. Yeah, which, which, yes, there's, there's there is a, a, a truth in both of, both of those, but the feminine is not just that either. <laughs> well, this this speaks to 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 us for a, a lot, really, because that image still exists. That image is current in a little bit of non-duality. It's, it sort of flows around a little you bit. You mean the goddess image? I, I, I mean that yeah. the women are more, yeah, the, is this, that, yeah, exactly yes. that. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, personally. And which I'm... means second, secondary, is secondary, which puts it in a slightly subcategory yes. Yes, to yes. the important conversation, which is what is consciousness? That's right. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's probably, <clears throat> excuse me, where where the, the 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 female shies away, yeah, because she she is consciously or unconsciously embodying the more flowing, yeah, earth based, feeling centered, body centered, yeah, and then and then uh, mind or whatever we want to call it is is is. Yeah, it's it's sort of avoided or denied for whatever reason. So, yeah, to me, it, it's it's neither and both. <laughs> I don't see any differentiation. I don't see a split between mind and body, or even mind and heart. Yeah, so there's no mm. um, sort of retracting from uh, directness of expression or clarity of expression or um yeah in favor of a more body centered mm. uh all compassionate <laughs> yeah kind of feel good yeah or, and neither is 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 the tenderness of the heart um subjugated for the the the, the wisdom of of minds to me it's they flow in and out of each other 
and, and a very responsive to the needs of the situation. Yeah. In, in some situations, circumstances, interactions, it might be the, 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 the compassionate openness of just being with. Yeah, which has a tenderness, meeting in the tenderness of the heart, of the yeah, the intimacy. And in other cases, there might be the <laughs> the sword of mm. of truth or directness mm. that mm. that has great value, but not one in favor of the other. It's mm. what what's appropriate here now. And and so that transcends masculine and feminine. Um it does, but no, it doesn't transcend it as a as a way of Avoiding it, which one can, yeah, you know, one can be a little bit hoodwinked sometimes by transcend the idea or the word transcendence, oh, yeah, which I, is I, to, to go beyond it. I know what you, what you. I just want to clarify that actually means inclusive in that yes, sense. It's it's, yes. it's it's a it's a very inclusive thing, and I I I just have to say that you know your your articulate. There are a few women around now in the non-duality scene, and I think they're speaking with the same kind of clarity of mind as you do. Yeah, as a woman. Yeah, it's not to the, not to the exclusion of the the feeling nature, if you like, mm-hmm. but actually inclusive of it, but still able to speak to the mm-hmm. quality of mind that actually is required nowadays. Still, yeah. But also, I do see that there are some masculine teachers, a few, yeah, who who are teaching. The, in the contemporary world, who also have the capacity yeah, and speaking to their soft, to their soft heart as well, and and I and I, it, when it, when it's right, it's absolutely that's what that's where we're at. That's what's needed. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So you were going to say something before I think I rudely interrupted you. Is that, <laughs> no, I don't actually something? remember what that is. Oh. I think perhaps just to say, uh, I, don't, I think it's relevant to this conversation, is that there's also a, a sort of an, another dynamic. And again, I, I, I don't know if this is the whole of it, the, the sum of it, or, or you know, whether it's, it's you know worthy of some exploration. Is that going back to the question that um you mentioned right at the beginning about somebody someone who's going to interview me who said where are the female teachers yeah. i mean we know they're around yeah again yeah, yeah, name yeah. names but we don't need to but perhaps they're so it always slightly surprises me when somebody says that but i, I can mm. see what they're saying and perhaps that has something to do I and mean, he's talking about visibility really um perhaps that has something to do with um Sometimes the, you know, there's one thing to, to, to awaken and to, to move from that. And perhaps that turns into being a spiritual teacher. Yeah. I'm talking about as a, as a female. And then, and then there's the, you know, being exposed, yeah. Being visible in the world. Yeah, which has a worldly aspect to it, <laughs> whether it's through uh, social media, whether it's through being online, whether it's through being in the public, that has a certain, um, what shall I call it? That has a certain dynamic to it in the sense of being visible. You're being exposed to um, uh being, let's say, judged, categorized, um, and compared, uh, and so on by the public, by people who don't necessarily know you or know the essence of the teaching. Yeah. And that is actually for some a scary place. And one that may um, be subconsciously retreated from or avoided. Yeah. So in that sense, we're kind of entering, if you like, to be visible, one enters the world. And the world, because of its historical and cultural um, uh, dynamics of masculine and feminine in the way that we've been speaking about more historically 
may not support the <laughs> yeah i know yeah i know what you know doing. what i'm saying oh, the yeah, feminine yeah. way yeah. which has less drive push ambition um uh strength of persona yes. yeah strength persona, of persona yeah. that's what i'm saying and 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 i know that for my self in the sense that the persona even though people might not see it this way the persona actually is not strong or hasn't been it's been quite fragile so the fear of exposure the fear of being misunderstood um uh so on yeah there's a certain vulnerability or fragility in that so it, but 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 in service to to the light of being all of that has been moved through and continues to be moved through. So it's not, mm. it's not an impediment. Yeah. But I, I would say that for some yeah. women, especially in the more contemporary sense, because they haven't come from a worldly, a lot of awakened individuals these days are artists of some sort. They have a poetic nature or an artistic nature. They don't come from the world of commerce or public kind of interface. So to then come into the public arena which is how others will see you. Otherwise, how will they know about you and, and the teaching? That has a certain impact, mm. you know? <laughs> so I think that plays yes, a part seen in it, it as I've, well. I, yeah. I've seen it. I have, I've seen it because what I, what I hear you describe me is that people, uh, once you stick your head out, as it were, you know, as a, as a teacher or something, in, the, in then, then you become uh, projected upon quite easily of the somewhat unconscious cultural belief systems yeah, that, that are embedded in society that each one carries to a greater or lesser extent. And usually uh, what you're pointing to is the judgment of the female, which is how dare she, who does she think she is? You know, who, what gives you the right? Mm. We've had this one before, yeah. you know, where do you, where do you get your authority? which is pretty much a who do you think you are, you damn woman, you shouldn't be sticking yours as a man's job. Kind of, you know, put it simply and bluntly. You know, we've seen that and we've heard that. And it's, and 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 the thing that I was going to get to is that a man, well, often a man's way of dealing with that kind of threat is by overcoming it, yes. by overpowering it. So the ego gets bigger. Yes, it. that's right. Yeah? And we've that's seen right. this a million times. Yes. You see it in life. Yeah. So politics is that. Yeah. But also yes. religion is that you overcome it by no one will question my author or whatever it is. That's uh, right. Is that a woman's way? That's is right. the question. Because yes. I would say that knowing women and knowing you and, and being around this kind of thing, that women are inherently much more open in the sacral center. And so don't have quite that capacity to overcome. They're That's not right. really in this in that way. They can deal with it. It's not to say they're weak. In, in fact, it's the opposite. But because we're living in the masculine world where everybody's trained into the masculine world, we're all conditioned into the same world, guys. Yeah. That it's like there's a bit of a clash there. And so in 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 the face of that kind of conflict, what is the answer? Retreat. Yes. That's right. Yes. I that that I I I, I yeah, I think that goes on. And I think that's a hidden sort of behind the scenes, energetic kind of dance that goes on that only when you're in it, do you actually kind of really sense what what's going on there. And, the, the, and that's and just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, I would say that I've seen you. I've, I, I, I've seen you actually. I'm um, 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 Excuse me. One time when I, I I wasn't actually there, but I know that this this kind of thing happened. It was a a a, a questioning of your authority, yes, yes, if you like, yeah, <laughs> somewhere ab abroad in Europe or somewhere. And uh, and I remember that I think you allowed it in a true woman's way to penetrate you without you know. I don't want to talk too much about the sexual meaning of such <laughs> things, but you did allow it to penetrate you. You didn't overcome it. You didn't deny it. You allowed it to penetrate you and become a source of great something. I don't know what it was. You don't yes, speak to that. I, I, and yes. then you came out the next day and you were changed by it, but you had returned, but you hadn't pushed it away. You'd allowed it in yes. and then digested it fully. Yeah. You'd absorbed yes. it into your being without any ownership at, 
Uh, and that was yes. a beautiful thing. And I've seen this happen with you, <laughs> which makes sorry, but it makes you a stronger teacher. Yeah. For it. I, I, I think that's what I mean about sort of allowing the world to penetrate you yes. the world the world to crucify you yeah and yes. in that crucifixion you you really come to know that which is more eternal than anything that people are projecting onto you one way or another and i think that's what happened i you know on on the personhood self uh, level on the you know persona or ego level there's still a self here i was shattered i was <laughs> I don't know if I was insulted, not quite that, but I was, I was shocked. I was hurt. I was, I felt misunderstood. I felt exposed. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know how, yeah. And, and, and yet I allowed that, that shell to shatter and not the truth of the, the questioning of the authority. Yeah. That the, mm. there was no, no truth in that because nobody was trying to take a position of authority. Um, but somehow the 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 brokenness allowed me to go deeper into my vulnerability, but a vulnerability that didn't diminish, but actually brought something else out. So that when I spoke the next day, sort of came from a different place, a deeper mm -hmm. place. Um, and mm -hmm. there was no questioning of anything. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it sort of flowed very beautifully. So these these kind of things do serve to deepen us and to to bring us into a deeper authority which doesn't come from any surface authority so i i see the challenges of the world and the exposure uh if you like the the sort of pain of that exposure to the crucifixion to to actually serve something yeah. It doesn't always have to be like that, but it can no, be like that, not. especially can, can initially. I you, uh, I'd like to ask you just uh, not an oblique question, but uh, but it's relevant to this in a way because when you're speaking in that way, I I I, f I feel Jesus, not you. I feel <laughs> Jesus. You know the, the, this 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 image or this metaphor of Jesus, and I, I'd just like to ask you personally what. What Jesus means to you? What's that? How does that speak to you? I I I see. I don't see it. I I experience, uh, if you like, Jesus not not as the human form, the human individuation. Because how could I possibly know that? anything about that other than what's been handed down as stories or conjecture or myth or whatever. I, I have no idea. But Jesus is the essence, the Christ light, as that which has got the capacity to stand as openness, to stand as undefendedness in the midst of uh, suffering, in the midst of crucifixion, in the mi midst of um, judgment. Yeah. judgment of, of yeah uh, exposure yeah and to stand as the light to stand as undefendedness and within that to to know the eternal the eternal that can never be touched or harmed by anything that seems to attack us or yeah harm us on the level of form but that standing as that has no armoring around it it's not defended it's wide open and i know that i experience that in myself in various situations not as extreme as being on the cross <laughs> yeah but i think we each know that but it, it or, or have that capacity within us, whether we actually come to truly know it by abiding as that is not everyone's journey, certainly not in this lifetime, it may be <laughs> some other time, but it is uh, uh, an innate uh, potential 
in each human being. Yeah, for some buried underneath so many layers of armoring that there's no chance really of breaking through that. But it is there as a potential. I think when that potential has broken open like a seed, then then we are that light. Yeah, that doesn't mean we're always nicey nicey or we're always yeah acting or behaving in ways that others think is Jesus like. But it's it's a natural movement from that light, come what may, in any circumstance. That's how I experience mm. and the, so that, the Christ. And so that that is the the uh, a, a beautiful blend of what one could loosely term call the masculine and the feminine. Yes. Because yeah. because neither it's neither of them, but it's both of them. Yes. Uh, when we absolutely, and that's what I mean about transcending masculine and feminine. I don't mean transcending that way. I mean going beyond yeah. to to that which is the essence, the essential nature. When uh, again, I've spoken about this in in various ways, but my the initial uh, awakening that 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 went to the core, yeah, to wake up out of a dream self, ego self, was actually the well the precursor to that was a a, a visceral uh, sort of inner vision journey of the individuated self into more and more subtle realms of presence and openness and that was acutely sensed yeah experienced presence and openness and the 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 vision that came the inner understanding which was also a visual and visceral understanding was that presence was a masculine quality the ability to simply be here to be here yeah no looking forward no looking back just here and the openness was a feminine quality yeah mm. it, an infinite openness, unboundedness that included everything. Nothing was denied in that. But the 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 the, the depth of that recognition was that they were the same. They weren't different. They weren't two separate qualities or separate experiences. They were one and the same experience. And that's what I would call the inner marriage. Yeah. Once we start talking about it and dissecting it, then we can say that's a masculine quality and that's a feminine quality. And then we can see how that gets sort of diluted into the stereotypes of the masculine, yes, <laughs> and the feminine. Yeah. But actually, at its core, it's a very gentle and quiet presence and openness that are really two sides of the same coin. But I, ex my, my experience and the, even the language that came, the expression that came from that, which was something totally unexpected for me, was that this was the marriage of God and Goddess, of the Holy Mother and the Holy Father. This is one and the same. It's the so depth of the heart. Yin, yin and yang. Yin and yang. Well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which gives rise then to the the whole human being, not the fragmented. That's right. Either yes. one neither the other and yes. neither god nor human but both you know yes. it's the the harmony of all that appears separate or divided yes 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 wow and that's very you know it's very beautiful and it's also you know heartbreaking on a certain level because when we look you know into in, in coming back to reality as we bring this to a conclusion in a sense when we look at the cold stark reality of today's world and the history of today's world and the yes uh, one century ago two centuries ago you know we 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 see to this to this being i see the deranged 
uh, masculine that's become a, a, a sort of megalomaniac narcissist in a sense consumed by its own egoic arrogance without any capacity to 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 know or even be willing to go towards the the kind of things that you're talking about that mm-hmm. feeling nature the openness it's very much about closeness and closeness is all about control you know and we've been seeing the rolling out of this unconscious movement for really so many hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years that you know there's a sense i i i truly believe because if we're having this conversation we're not the only ones having this conversation this conversation is happening and uh and and, and my hope in a way i see the 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 movement the the voice is shifting yeah i mean men the masculine cannot go on we're seeing what's happening in i come back to seeing what's happening in places like iran at the moment mm-hmm. where women are rising up and and being willing they're willing to kind of say you can't you can't take us all this time you can't do this to us all this time you've done this before and we you know and uh something is happening something is changing and i see the articulation of this you know um, guided by women guided by the feminine mm. Guided by the feminine, both feminine within men who can get to it, who can reach it. It's not a disempowered, weak place. It's a very strong place. Your voice is one of the strongest I've heard. Mm. Yeah, it's not. It's not a weak woman's voice. It's a very strong voice. It's just that it stands for love. Yeah, it puts love highest of a value, not lowest. It's you know, and and you know, I feel strongly, very strongly about this, and um. There has to be a movement in this, and I think you're you're speaking to it. And I think all of the women who are coming along now are interested in it and wanting some of that authority. So authority has been stolen from the feminine. Mm. So, have we? How, how have we done here? Well, I hope we've done good. <laughs> we've sort of moved around it a little bit. Yes, yeah. yes, there are many facets to this, but I hope that's inspired some deeper self-reflection. I know that, you know, listening. sorry, I, I do apologise for interrupting, but I was, I, you know, for myself as a man, I know that, that you know, listening to you and being with you and, and, and diving into my own, yeah, f- let's call it feminine nature, which I think, you know, 20 years ago, I was terrified of, of what I felt and spent my whole life in avoidance. And, 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 uh, it's never, it was, it was worse then than it is now. And now just, there is no, there is no resistance to the feeling nature. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I have to say that, you know, in spite of, or as well as in addition to everything that we're exploring, uh, I have a sort of non-identification with Mm -hmm. being female. Yeah. And yet an absolute acceptance Mm -hmm. that there is a female individuation yeah, a form. So it, it it does it does take care of its femaleness just naturally. It can't help itself. It's not going to pretend to be something else or deny it by shaving its head or whatever it might be. So it, it, everything, all forms are what they are. They just are themselves. This form is itself. Your form is itself. But in in my, uh, it's, you know, what am I? I don't think of myself as woman in the world or not in the world or in relationship or not in relationship. I don't, I don't, I don't think of myself as that. I don't see myself as that. There's just beingness expressing itself in whatever way or moving in whatever way is just natural. So there's, there's no. Self-referencing, self-referencing. How am I going to get ahead in a in a in a male world? (laughs) How am I going to? I I just don't see it that way. There's no comparison. There's no 
agenda there whatsoever. There's no stereotypes. And, you know, there are times when I might appear to be, I don't know what I appear to be, you know, more masculine and more feminine. I, none of that. None of that. It doesn't matter. Well, I don't think of you as, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how think I think of you. Woman either. <laughs> I just think you're just extraordinary. <laughs> I just thank God, whatever that God is, grace that that I, you know, that that that, that divine providence brought the two of us together for whose benefit. I just did, really don't know, but I don't see you as a as a. I just see you as a divine being, who happens to be, you know, appear as a woman. But I, I you know, it's like you're gorgeous and you're a woman, and you know, it doesn't really sort of. Every day you blow my mind in some kind of way, <laughs> shape or form, so that both of us in some way have transcended in, in the best possible way, I think, or the nicest possible, way, the most real sort of yeah. way, any of this stuff and nonsense, which is kind of consciousness <laughs> having a having a good time in some yeah. ways, trying, just, to, yeah, trying to get through this existence. <laughs> yin and yang. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, well, that's enough guffawing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we hope it's entertained you in some sort of way and spoken, you know, to the to the to the to the man that you are or the woman that you are, and uh, and the, the essence of it is to explore and find the wholeness, really, isn't it? To to the end of division, the end at the end of the divided self, and we start to see a new world build, building itself around us. Because <laughs> this is all a, f a fiction of the divided self, ultimately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's where we're going with this, really. It's not really about anything else. Many blessings to you. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, we're off to the kitchen, actually, I think. <laughs> Amoda? <Maybe. laughs> oh, of course, maybe not. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much for listening um, or watching. And we'll see you again soon. Take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye.